So a lot of you know the Mask Man, YouTuber, content creator within the anime and manga community, now manga author. Congratulations to him and everyone else involved on this project. It's been a long time coming. I'm very happy for them to finally release their first chapter. If you're interested in reading Mask's manga, Devro, a link will be in the description and in the comment section. I highly recommend you go check it out and give it a chance. Formulate your own opinion. So this is Devro, a brand new manga by the Mask Man. I've been very interested in this. I'm always excited to see what cool concepts or ideas or characters that other content creators come up with. It's one thing to critique and talk and analyze different manga and stories etc etc but to make your own. To transfer all of this knowledge effortlessly is a completely different experience and one that takes a lot of time and effort and dedication. A lot of that hard work has paid off but not without some caveats, some odd stuff here and there which I think is perfectly fine and honestly expected for new manga authors coming into the scene that is self-published. They don't have a massive team, there's not some type of quality assurance that goes through six layers of people. It's just masks, a couple of different artists, and potentially someone working uh, to kind of go through and touch up some little things. So it's going to be quote-unquote rough in some areas, and I think that's perfectly okay. I don't expect a glamorous masterpiece right from the get-go. I would rather see something built from nothing and continuously grow and shine and cultivate into a beautiful diamond. Overall, I enjoyed the whole idea with Devro, uh, the Spanish influence, which I believe is Master's culture and heritage, a lot of influence or homage to Berserk and Dark Souls, which is stuff that Mask enjoys, and you can see it laid out within the artwork, within how stuff is written, and just how a lot of things are connected together. Probably safe to say those works from other mediums have become a massive inspiration to Mask, and to cultivate his story, not necessarily within their image, but uh, to take bits and pieces and expand upon it within his own right. Getting into the more nitty gritty of stuff, I think the opening for this story is very redundant. And I don't mean to be so blunt about it, but everything with the knights, the conversation, that the continuity, the opening aspect for this story is odd. And I think a lot of people are going to be very confused when reading it because it doesn't really provide anything. It provides some pretty artwork, it provides some names, and obviously something that's going to be played upon within the future. But when it comes to framing your understanding of the world or characters, or abilities or the concept itself, it's a little bit non-existent. There's a lot of other things on top of it that kind of skewer your perception of the story a little bit and its continuity, which boils over into the overall reading experience. So the opening is a little bit disjointed, but that's okay. There's a couple of ways to recontextualize it in the future, but in this instance, putting some sort of statement or dialogue, I think at the beginning or even after it would have helped quite a bit. Those opening dialogues or statements can be used to frame what you're about to read, the story itself, the, the world, the emotions, what to expect even. They can be very ambiguous, very context heavy, or just completely random. Words or things pulled from the story which provides something. And you kind of done it a little bit after the opening, which was framed by a very mysterious and ominous figure, which I think is perfect. If you had something like the words that that ominous figure was saying at the beginning, the very first thing you read going into the story, or even after that opening, that probably would have made it a little bit more digestible. Also, using Spanish words as a in-word vernacular or slang I think is very brilliant. I would recommend putting author notes, however, because unfortunately I don't speak Spanish, a lot of people are not going to speak Spanish, and as much as I appreciate this in-world vernacular to create more identifiable characters and how people speak, I don't know what they're saying. And as a reading experience, if I have to go out of your chapter to Google what they're saying just so I can understand it, it's a little bit counter intuitive. It takes the emphasis off of reading and more so researching, which is a little bit backwards and something that I would recommend avoid doing. Because there's not much of it, it's not the biggest of deals, but for future reference, maybe a little author's note for what this word means or what this phrase means. And if it's something very common, like a cheer or a thank you or a greeting, you don't have to do it every single time. People will start to get used to it and it becomes more of a, a common understanding. But for long phrases, for example, definitely need some sort of author's note just to explain explain what it means, especially within this type of context, which considering this is heavy within the opening, it adds a bit of a disconnection to everything. And probably why a lot of people feel that the pacing is rushed or jarring or that the opening is a little bit redundant. To doubly add on top of that, speaking of continuity, the first handful of pages have a black background, which a lot of manga readers are used to seeing as being a flashback or something taken in a different time period, etc. So that black background represents that, but very 
very quickly it completely disappears and I can understand artistically this would be very difficult to do because you have armor and a lot of shading and a black background is very difficult to kind of pull that off consistently but the extra steps to continue to use it I think would be very viable the reason I'm talking about this so much is it's probably the most quote-unquote problematic area and covers a lot of the remaining of the story because everything else is pretty finely tuned everything feels nice and flowy for the most part I actually didn't really have a problem with the pacing after the opening there is some instances where it feels like it phases or jumps between different altercations oddly but that can definitely be improved upon just by extending a scene a little bit more or trying to bleed the scenes into each other so it's not as much as a jump and you can definitely see that you're trying to do that with a lot of scenes they somewhat bleed either by action or by talking into the next scene which is great it's just understanding that pacing and the reading experience going through it so I think a great way to help rectify this if you're a little bit unsure yourself is to have someone that is completely outside of the creation team and just have them read it and go through it just to see what it's like as a outside perspective reading the story for the first time and does it flow well does it feel like this continuity does it feel nice to read and to indulge within you can definitely do it yourself but because you are the creator you're going to have a bit of a, a bias or a perspective that you're not actually going to get from just an everyday viewer like myself or everyone else for example something to look into maybe i think it'd be worthwhile i enjoy isaac i think he's got a lot of traits pulled from guts the lonely traveler burdened by a very mysterious past burdened by potentially power that he does not understand or know it's interesting it adds this level of mystery and intrigue i like this character a lot ramon raymond even though i feel like everyone's going to die or at least has the chance to die he has the most i would say fleshed out personality other than isaac it works well with this guy because his personality is very obnoxious very goofy very cheerful playful etc so it's a lot better to navigate around and to utilize in a lot of different aspects when it comes to the other two they're a little bit more shy a little bit more coy a little bit more blanketed this is isn't the worst thing. Sometimes the dialogue feels a little bit too perfect, especially when you have so much vernacular going through them sometimes, slang, phrases. It's a bit odd when they speak so identical to one another. So maybe trying to decipher how they talk within their own identity and how they would use different slang and how that would express their personality a little bit more. Again, it's only the first chapter. We're only getting introduced to them. So this can easily come with time and building upon them, which is perfectly normal. Or they could probably be killed in the next chapter side note i love this little guy skull chicken thing that delivers packages and posts to people beautiful brilliant love him i want a story just about him i also really enjoyed the ending design for the hands covering isaac's face and this mysterious ominous figure behind him it sparks a lot of intrigue and it's very compelling for people to seek the next chapter which i believe you just recently tweeted that it comes out within august so i definitely look forward to that overall i I would say that this is a pretty solid first chapter it gives you a main character it gives you a motivation a bit of the world a bit of uh, this and that there is some hiccups here and there of course but i think that's perfectly fine it's all a big learning curve at the end of the day and some stuff that can easily be phased out over time i don't think there is inherent faults or don't do this or don't go anywhere near that which is a good sign i'm also stuff that can be cleaned up with a method of production obviously a lot of the background is one I personally don't really mind, but I feel a lot of people will have an issue with it. It's not a full production team. There's not six different background artists or assistants to go through quality assurance. I fully understand. There's definitely ways that kind of go around it using photographs or different things online to kind of trace over to just provide some sort of elements within the background to make it more filled and then for stuff like city scenes or panels very simplified character designs just for npcs just to make it feel a little bit more alive and fluid and this and that there's always more that can be done there's always more with extra bits and pieces but it's perfectly fine if you don't want to do them just stick within your own strengths it's better to stay healthy and not to rush or push yourself uh, further than what you need to actually do as someone that writing the story obviously but also so for your artist for the people involved so of course definitely take your time with it and what you feel like is acceptable when it comes to artistic interpretation and flair i will say to be careful of your continuity the flow of your story and how you feel like readers will engage with each moment how they'll progress through each moment there's a lot of things a lot of simple things that can pull people out of
out of it, such as that simple black background that represents a flashback of some kind changing to white, or not being able to understand those Spanish words without going to Google Translate. Again, the best way to somewhat counteract this is to have someone that's not part of the creation process just to read through it and see if everything flows together just as a normal reader, so they can potentially pick up on stuff that you may not see that is a problem because you're the author or because you're the artist. At the end of the day, I think this is a solid first chapter. You have a lot of creative ideas, you have a lot of things that you want to do, and I can see it with the artistry that goes behind it. I know you're not drawing the story, but the ideas that you're probably bringing to the artist and how you're working with them is very nice. And all of you are pulling off some very beautifully conceptualized ideas, which is a combination of all your hard work and effort. So I'm excited to see how this fleshes out further, how this evolves over time, and how these characters start to grow and interact, and just to see everything bloom over time. Congratulations. I'm very proud of you, Mask, and everyone involved. You've done a phenomenal job. If you are interested in reading Devereaux, want to check it out for yourself. Once again, a link will be in the description and the comment section. I highly recommend it. With that, however, I want to thank you all for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Leave a like and subscribe. I greatly appreciate it. And I'll see you within the next one. Goodbye.